couple of shows, man. These stories and these people, these 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 artists have just been amazing at the positivity through their art and career. They've been given to us, uh, their fans, their family, their community, and they're taking the time to do this. You dig? I mean, this is this is what it's all about. And as you know, I always start every show with giving up the props to our first responders, our people who are out there on the front yeah. line, you know, our people who are in the, um, the medical field, our people who are in the fields of, of truck driving industry, you know, let's give it up to everybody, the, the doctors, the nurses, you know, the, even the people, the teachers right now, the teachers who are online teaching these little ones still giving them that education, and the parents who are trying to learn how to do what they need to do as well, teach, you know, helping them out. I want to give personal to our brother Kenny Scott down in New Orleans, police officer down there on the front line. Thank you, Kenny. I want to give it up to Harvey Palmer and Donovan Fordham, nurses in this industry who follow us in Positivity Posse. I want to give it up to Kevin Hicks and my nephew Greg Center, the truck drivers going back and forth that I just named before. I want to give it up to Leon Seard and, and Wayne and Eric Moore for actual doctors. You did? My roommate. Come on now. And, and I mean, you know, this love and dedication that they're giving, man, much respect, much respect. So today, ladies and gentlemen, as you see this brother on the other screen of mine, I just want to say a few words from my heart to you in reference wow. to this brother, Mr. Jonathan Slocum, a native of Atlanta, of course, ATL. And how Jonathan and I met was back in the early 80s at a place they used to call Oakwood College, but now they call Oakwood University, much University, respect. Yeah. So many people have come out of that, those, those pastures, you dig, that have, that have gone on to do their thing. Some of I just mentioned here before, that's where John and I met. And what I remember of Brother Jay, Brother Jay's always been sharp, okay? I mean, from <laughs> head to toe, you dig? I mean, even back in the day, Brother Jay would had a flair that was real. You know how you can tell how some flares are like pushed, like the people just been practicing this, you dig? But Jonathan Slocum, I can attest that back in those days, before even the world knew who Jay Slocum was as they do today, this has been wow. Jonathan Slocum's moniker. Wow. He's been real. It's come from the heart, it's come from the soul. And when you hear his story of his pioneering, of his style of comedy, you will have no question of why I'm saying what I'm saying. Wow. And since that time, you know, I'm gonna move even forward. As you know, when you come on the Victor Brooks show, I give it up. Because one of the things I've learned in my life and even in this industry, you gotta give it up. If the people are doing their thing, especially people that you respect, man, there ain't no hating in this game. We living and we helping each other, you did? Right. And I and just the fact that my brother took his time to come here. Thank you, Jay. But I remember since oh, that man. time, he's been, we've been so proud to watch Jonathan come from the comedian to the host of the Paramount that he is right now. We've watched my brother grow into his seasoned comedy of clean comedy, a pioneer of clean comedy. Jonathan Slocum's name has been partnered with Sinbad in this clean comedy campaign. Over his career, he's opened and hosted for the legends like Take Six, okay? We're talking about Natalie Cole, Shirley Caesar, uh, the list of the Vanessa Bell Armstrong, Stephanie Mills. Uh, Jonathan was one of the presenters to be able to give the, la the, the, the jazz music legend Nancy Wilson her flowers while she was still living where he hosted her memorial in front of all of her peers, as well as Jonathan's. And this one, before I get into it, Jay, I got to give this one from the top. You picked up the phone one day when it rang, and it was the queen of soul herself, Aretha Franklin. It wasn't CAA, CAA it wasn't a management right, company. Right. It was Aretha the Franklin that picked up the phone so, and called Jonathan Slocum. From this let point, me out take it away, brother. <laughs> all right, so... Uh, first of all, man, it's, it's good. Hold on a second. Need some water, please. Thanks, baby. That's my that's my boo, Oprah. Um, <laughs> Oprah Winston, not um, Oprah. <laughs> um, so thanks for having me on the show, man. I mean, everything you said, man, is it's humbling. Um, but to this story in Atlanta, they used to have an award, so called the Trumpet Award. Okay, and they've since moved it to L.A., but. So that year, they honored uh, Rita Franklin and Earth, Wind, and Fire. 
uh, on the same show. And I was known for doing, they used to, well, people call it warm up. I don't like that type of, I call myself an audience host. Okay. I'm up and down the whole night and I'm hosting the audience. So I'm doing my thing and, um, and when I had my last break, I always come out and thank the people for letting me hang out with them. And when I came out, it was like this roaring ovation. I mean, it was led, Aretha Franklin stood up first and people just wouldn't stop applauding. Right. And I, I was moved to tears. <laughs> right on. Bro. And then, so when I, you know, settled myself, I said, so I guess I'm going on the road with you, uh, uh, Aretha. And then Philip Bader said, no, you're going with us. Aretha <laughs> said, no, you're going with me. And Philip <laughs> said, no, you're going with us. And I'm going, huh? And I'm, you know, I'm blown away by it. Right. And then sure enough, man, like a day or so later, my cell phone rang. Hello? <laughs> Hi, Jonathan. This is Aretha. I'm like, Aretha, who? Come on, who is this? Yeah. It's Aretha. <laughs> really? Who, who? Who is this? <laughs> Jonathan, it's Aretha. I just saw you at the Trumpet Awards. You were spectacular. You looked well. You dressed well. Real professional. I just wanted to know if you want to go on the road and do some dates with me. Mm-hmm. And I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> He said, okay, well, my sister's going to call you. We, we go out in two weeks. We're going to start off in New York City at Radio City Music Hall. Come on now. This was the first out the box. Radio City. Yeah. 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 And ironically, it was the weekend of Whitney Houston's funeral, which is the reason why uh-huh. Aretha couldn't make it. Okay. She was ill as, as well. She got sick out after the first show. Mm-hmm. So, man, I, my first show was with Aretha Franklin at uh, Radio City Music Hall. Um, and you know, she, I, it's so many stories, but one and of the you main things that people- the connection, it became a, did that become a, as knowing as we know how real Aretha was and how mm-hmm. real you are, was there like a family connection after that moment, during those times? Well, she wasn't very personal with those who worked for her. I mean, there okay. were those that she knew, her sister, mm-hmm. or her cousin, some other, and her mm-hmm. uh, son was doing some dates and, um, so, but she was very personable while working. As a matter mm-hmm. of fact, she she paid everybody in cash at the end of the night. Okay. We'd all be lined up outside her dressing right room. On. No questions asked, right. Burning <laughs> up, because you turned the air off, so it's hot as hell. Gotcha. Uh, and she brings you in and tell you how you did, pay you in cash, sign a little something, something. And uh, she decided to add a, a little comedy to her set, because she wanted to try to outdo me, she said. And, ah, and she'd be okay. like, so how'd you like that one, John? <laughs> I'm like, see, uh, can you just stick and stay in your lane, please? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? That kind of tells the, the, the story of that old school, lovable artist competition that used to hit oh, every yeah. stage back yeah. in the day. Yeah. And yeah. let me ask you this, Jay. Um, you know, maybe, let's go to the clean comedy um, I'm, I'm going to say Hold on, I, well, I got to share this. was one last part about the Talk Olympics. to me, yeah. It's, it's so pivotal. So her last performance in LA, we were at the Microsoft Theater. Uh-huh. And um, I do a uh, segment in my set of which I, I'm known for impersonating certain people. And <laughs> one of the persons that I impersonate is uh, Smokey Robinson. Wow. And uh, so I was doing my Smokey Robinson that night. And then they always do a little reception after the show. So we're at the reception and this guy was sitting down on the couch and everybody was around him. And somebody said he wanted to see me. And I went there and he looked at me, he said, young man, no one has ever made me think that Smokey Robinson was on the stage and it wasn't him. He said, your impersonation was spot on. Fantastic. Fantastic. Barry Barry Gordy. Oh, well, see now, come on. I guess (laughs) no. I guess he would know. <laughs> Dude, that just, that gave me chills, man, you know. Now, you know what, Jay, when you get those, um, when you get those, I'm gonna say accolades or praise or, or encouraging um, supportive things from legends like Aretha Franklin and Barry Gordy and all of the ones that you work with or have, or have experienced your comedy. Mm-hmm. What does that do, man? When you think about where Jay has come from, to that point, what is that? What what happens with Jay? I mean, it's man, it's it's um, it, it literally takes your breath away. I, I have others I hadn't even told you about when yeah. I was 
you know, beckoned down to Augusta, Georgia, because James Brown wanted a comedian to come go on the road with him. Mm -hmm. Chose me. You right, know, on. And, <laughs> right on. Uh, and I'm sitting in his office trying to have a conversation with him and, you know, kind of difficult to understand <laughs> what he's saying. But everybody who works for him, they knew what he was saying. And, yeah, right. You know, <laughs> I was, he, he, at the time we had VHS, he put the tape in and he was just laughing. <laughs> just laughing, you know. <laughs> And then, and then uh, he picked up the phone to call his assistant. And I swear to God, Vic, I don't know how she understood. He said, "And to get my job, I want you to work. Get a little on that. All right, that." And then she was like, uh, "Yes, sir, Mr. Brown." I'm like, what is she? Yeah. So you know, went on the road with him, and, and the other day, I only did one day with him because he fired me. He fired you, Jake. You well, because I asked for my money in advance, and I can you know, I got you, even, they, they didn't like that, so okay. But, but you I know, had the experience, yeah. So it always, you know, of course, it's always humbling and overwhelming when you get a chance to work with icons and legends like that, and um, yeah, just put you in a really, really, really grateful place, man. You know, just the fact of the queen of soul, godfather of soul, um, and 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 the fact that you what you've been able to accomplish in your career and still accomplishing to this day um and doing it under the 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 gen the, i don't know label junior moniker of clean comedy mm. um in my opinion not disrespecting any other comics journey of what they do but it has to be even more or is it i'm not going to answer this your is it more difficult for a clean comedian in this genre well I won't say the word is difficult, but it's it's challenging because when you see a black man on stage doing comedy, it's automatically assumed it's going to be a certain way. And and again, like you said, I don't I don't go or say anything negative about people who choose other options mm -hmm. as far as uh, their material content. Yeah. Uh, but it's kind of like it's the beauty of 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 options, you know. People, everybody got to laugh. But mm -hmm. people want to hear people that talk and yeah. believe and sound like them. I got you know, you. I've yet to be invited to anything country western because that ain't my audience, and you know I, I don't do anything relative to hip hop. I'm not a millennial. I don't know the young stuff. I, it ain't my thing. I got you. Uh, and so, you know, you find out where your lane is, and grown folk, black folk, uh, you know. Some just prefer to not have, have the language. Okay. True story is, um, rest in peace, um, Mr. Graves of Black Enterprise, who recently passed. Um, they used to have this, um, you know Earl Graves from Black Enterprise, right? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And he just passed a couple weeks ago. Yes, much respect. Um, they had a situation once where they, you know, they had these big corporate events and, um, Eddie Griffin was the hired comedian for that show. And, you know, Eddie Griffin is a comic genius. I mean, he's, <laughs> yeah. you know, he's yeah. in my top 10. Mm -hmm. His language ain't for the clean folk. Gotcha. You know? Gotcha. But they hired him anyway. And so he was up there being Eddie Griffin and yeah. smoking a cigarette and having a cognac <laughs> or whatever. And it, it just got overwhelming for Earl Graves and the corporate sponsors. Mm -hmm. Earl Graves walked up on stage and took the mic out of his hand and asked him to leave, you know. Got you. Got you. Uh, and then, mm -hmm. unfortunately, I guess for him, but the next year, I got the call. I got you. you know, uh -huh. And I killed it doing uh -huh. my brand of comedy, which is, you know, quite, um, it's, it's, it's non-offensive and, mm -hmm. you know, filled with, I guess, events and things right. pertinent to whatever yeah. uh, the situation. And then, of course, the corporate people loved it. So... Mm -hmm. So I won't say that it's hard, but if there's a place for it, uh, does it pay as well as the others? Uh, yeah. No. No, okay. <laughs> uh, you know, but that's getting better. Yeah. Yeah, right on, right on, yeah. right on. Yeah. Man, that's such an honest uh, 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 feedback on that, brother, because you would think, I guess, clean comedy, which they, I guess, used to call specifically gospel comedy, right? But, or not used to call, but also had a moniker of right. gospel comedy. I, to true. talk about that for a minute, mm -hmm. I know growing up, not only as a PK, but growing up in the church, my, in the Christian community, we never, we had funny pastors, we had funny deacons, yep. we had funny sitting around the table after church, we had funny 
relatives or people even if we were there was laughter and comedy in our life mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but as and I'm, I'm talking about christian over all the base baptist right. whoever you have mm-hmm. this but we never as christians brother that mm-hmm. i know of really equated comedy and gospel mm-hmm. comedy right. and church but you you took that that realm wow that was perfectly stated Vic. and okay. you said it great so Here's how it happened. Uh, I'm a comedian at the time, starting off in Atlanta. Uh, one of the thing, things I did, I was a choir director okay. in Atlanta. I, I, host, I directed, along with my partner, Daryl Alexander. You know him? Right on, Big that's, that's big D. That's, that's fam. That's, right. that's my man. man. So we had, a, we had a group called the Harmonizing Co-Eds okay. from, from Berean. Uh, and then we later branched out. We had this big citywide uh, choir called the Atlanta Seven Day Business Mass Choir. Okay. So we would do concerts and I would MC the concerts. And I'm me, I'm, they, yeah. we, we laugh in the church house, you know. Um, <laughs> and so uh, I started traveling, hosting gospel concerts. Uh-huh. Uh, and then- uh, I'm sorry, the emotions just clicked in and said, we knew you had vocals. <laughs> <laughs> I That's love it. From the emotions. Go ahead. I got you. I got you. Yeah, I got some vocals when I'm doing other people's voices. Okay. So, so the short of it is that uh, I be, people begin to know me as this guy who was doing uh, gospel concerts and being funny. So after I've been on the on the scene a little bit, uh, I hosted a, a concert by a group of unknown six guys singing music without instruments called Take Six. Much respect. And I opened for them in Chicago, and it was there that they said, and the then manager Gail Hamilton, yes, a good fit. Let's let's take Jonathan with us on on some dates. Yeah. And I, they asked me if I would. I said yes. I looked at. I was working for AT and T at the time. I was an account mm-hmm. executive. Mm-hmm. Shout out to AT and T. Okay. Uh, and then I looked at their check from working for two weeks and the check from being funded for fifteen minutes. <laughs> Case I was out. And so after that, uh, I, I managed to be, I don't know if I was the first, but at least one of the first to do a clean set on HBO's Deaf Comedy Jam. Right. That was the thing that brought all of us to the forefront. And after the success of it, I was on season two. I didn't really fit the Deaf Comedy Jam criteria. You know, it was hard and hardcore and, you mm-hmm. know, thuggish hard and mm-hmm. it wasn't my thing. Yeah. So I had to find a way to use my gift. So I just decided to make a career out of uh, blending gospel and comedy. So yeah. I was then started doing dates with gospel artists. That's when the Winans and BB and CC mm-hmm. and Shirley Seeds. And then I'd do dates with Al Jarreau and, mm-hmm. and Joe Sample because I had open for Take Six. So Take right. Six still has a- All over the board, yeah. yeah. And a gospel following. So. <laughs> It kind of started from there. And then people were like, you could be funny in the church? I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> so then I got the calls from the different denominations, the different organizations, and it just kind of like went like wildfire. And even to this day, a lot of people still, you know, work. I don't, I don't work under that, that uh, category anymore. Gotcha. I've, been, I've broadened it. I'm clean, but mm-hmm. I, I do many other things, not just in churches and faith-based situations. Got you, man. Man, much respect on that because – you know, when you mentioned uh, um, uh, 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 crossing that bridge or those those barrier breakers like mm-hmm. Take Six and 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 Al Jarreau and those names, you were in the company of of barrier breakers of being able what? to come in to do that. You did yeah, so, but almost just it, it feels like it was it was supposed to happen to come You're up right. with Jonathan Slocum clean approach coming out of the church i'm going to say mm-hmm. church you know arena yeah. that followed you because now your take a lot of people associate uh the church in itself of mm-hmm. a community that a lot of people may forget about in some terms on the mass media vein with the cbs's and the abc's and the yeah. right there but we, we remember what tyler perry did with his stage presentations and things mm-hmm. of that nature 
where do you, why do you think, Jay, and, and I'm, I jumped off of my note because I, from a very, a very respected person just hit me with this question that I think it's that only you can answer this right now. Okay. With CBS, NBC, all of the major networks, brother, we've seen over the years certain shows that have dealt with spirituality and faith, Touched by an Angel, um, mm. right now we have God Friended Me, okay? Love that show. Love brother. that show, oh. love that oh, show love man. That. Why do you think, because okay, I remember in the 80s, and I, I won't mention his name because it was, conversation was in, in confidence and family, but he was the network exec back for NBC back in the 80s. And I remember him telling me that, hey man, we use the term middle America, which really represents a strong Christian following, okay, mm -hmm. of television viewers. Mm -hmm. Now let's say, why do you think it is only a couple that we can name that are coming with that spiritual base. You are groundbreaker with, with you are a groundbreaker with spiritual comedy. Why mm. is it so hard to bring that into the mainstream? Do you think, or is it hard, or what's the deal? Well, um, that kind of goes to uh, a question somebody asked me about uh, comedy clubs. Like I've only performed in three my whole career. Wow! And I, I could understand why they wouldn't book me, and then I found out from um, a club owner who did book me and it was with some hesitation reservation he said honestly Jonathan you know we love you everybody knows you but based on our research you know you attract a strong faith-based audience and we fear that if they come to the club they ain't gonna buy no liquor okay okay so they so their thought was I would love to have you but we make our money on liquor gotcha and I said dude these people love Jesus and Jack. Trust me, my brother. <laughs> it ain't that kind of party. But they were hesitant about it. So I think uh, overall, it's it's the uh, like who are they going to uh, like who's going to watch? Like they don't they right. don't know what to their their mindset is kind of um, one dimensional because when you think of Christians you immediately take a lot of things off the plate because they, they think that Christians don't drink, don't smoke, mm -hmm. don't mm -hmm. cuss, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you know, they don't want to talk about sexual things and, you know, they only go to church and they go to work and they say, but that's not who we are. Right. And I think more and more people are accepting the fact that there are church folk and then there are Christians. Like Christians are balanced. Mm -hmm. You know, a Christian will go to see Frankie Beverly on Friday, Mm -hmm. And then go see Donna McClurkin on Saturday. I mean, right. it's and so, the yeah, of it. yeah, I got you. You know, church folk they don't right. do nothing unless it's in the church, and you know, yeah, they I got you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh man, was that? I mean, thank you for that because I've often wondered. I said, man, how? Because I mean, I'm gonna go a step further, brother. Over the years, I have, and I know not myself, but many other folks that I've talked to, we. We've always, we, I would love to see a late night based Jonathan Slocum platform. Can you please stop right here? I, I just, let's do, I, I've not said this to nobody else, but that's where, that's my next spot. What? Like, I don't even know how you, I, we didn't even talk about this beforehand. What? No, we mother, didn't. I, I have, I've been running from it. I've been afraid to because I've, you know, after our after the last our senior hall, you know, debacle, it didn't mm -hmm. go well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I've always that's all I've ever wanted to do. Like oh my! I, I have watched Johnny Carson and David Letterman. Yeah. And Leno. That's I was up late night, forever. Yeah. And I've always felt that that would be my place. And mm -hmm. with the recent, like you said, people understanding you know, more and more how people of faith work, that we're not one dimensional. Mm -hmm. um, so without going into any real detail, yeah, yeah. man, we are working. <laughs> you, you're going to see brother. <laughs> right it, on, it's, right it's, on, man. I yeah. mean, okay, see? Yeah. You know, because it, it, and, you know, it, it only makes sense, man. You know, um, like you said earlier, people, uh, they comment on, my the content of what I talk about, but I have an old school mentality when it comes to my presentation. I don't, I'm not on stage without a suit and tie on ever. Exactly. 
if if you see me on stage, I'm without I'm I'm just acting up for whatever reason, but I'm not doing my job. Yeah. I mean, even when I did Deaf Comedy Jam, me and Bill Bellamy were like the first ones to wear a suit and tie on the, on the show. Okay. You know? Yeah. And yeah. so I have a, you know, they have added fashionably funny to my descriptive now, okay. you know, my team of people. And uh, and so it's time, you know, for people to see a freshness, mm -hmm. uh, some soul, you know, some, yeah. some swag, some flair, some flair, uh -huh. you know, to, uh -huh. to the late night uh, spectrum. And, um, Oh man, that's yeah. good to know, Jay. That is so good to know, man. That's because funny you said that nobody. Okay, <laughs> right? We hey, talk man. about it off camera. We have this connection anyway, you know. Exactly, so. brother. Because I mean, I mean, real is real. If if I'm one that says it, and I have you know nowhere near nothing network exec, no no shot yeah. call. I'm I'm one of the people that turn on the TV and watch, but then say, you know what? I dig what this person's doing, but dang on. I yeah. know what this brother can bring to this audience. And yeah. like my boy in the, in the network cat in the 80s, middle America would only be one of the arenas that would eat this stuff. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Because like you said, we got we got people all over the country and that 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 are that are locked into your mission, brother. And that, that mm -hmm. whole whole approach to your comedy. I I, I talked to uh, most of a lot of the, I would say mo a lot of the comedians that I've talked to over the years mm -hmm. um, have mentioned to me that speaking of comedy specifically, that comedy comes from a place that oftentimes is a place of pain, is a place of of, of growing. Okay, that there's something that comedy does for them as a comedian that it's a way to express it once they get on stage, once they write about it, of their comedy presentation. Do you feel the same? Just had a conversation about that. Um, shout out to my man, Roland Martin. Oh, yes. You know, he's, yes. he's done so much for my career, oh, man. man. And thank you all for I, bringing I that too. Wednesdays Wild and Out back. That's not a same. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's, <laughs> he's a bad man. Um, we had a conversation about that. The background of train is passing by. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. Um, so we were talking about just that. Uh, so here's the deal. The truth is, they, I I don't have those stories. Mm -hmm. When I came on the scene, as we talked about, they had never heard of a black man, you know, being funny and being clean, and it was unheard of. And so because it was such a new thing, offers just came to me. They just Wow. I was never not working. Now, I wasn't getting paid probably what I should have, but I was, you know, leaving corporate America and doing this, and I'm working Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, or one of the three weekends. It yeah. was all cool. So I, I didn't, and what I would talk about is just things that made people happy. And, right on. You know, and mm -hmm. things that were positive. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I didn't have the stories about the janky promoters and, driving six hours through the car. I, man, people took care of me early on. Gotcha. You know, um, so all comedians don't work from a place of pain. Gotcha. Some of us just want to entertain this audience. So <laughs> I cater, you know, my comedy, because I mostly host things comedically. I cater whatever I speak on for this audience. If I'm in front of the National Dental Association, then I mean, we're talking about teeth and halitosis, yeah, all that, you know. Yeah. And if I'm in front of the, you know, Black Bankers of America, then we're talking about things relative to money. I, I don't, you know, do I have some stuff in my life that have been, you know, I guess, uh, you know, fatal in some way? Yeah, I've been through some stuff, but that's personal. Yeah, and exactly. I don't, I don't, I don't choose to talk about it, you know in a comedic way. I was married to an amazing lady and mm -hmm. go well. I'm not talking about that on stage. Gotcha. gotcha. I want people to learn themselves, which I ultimately had to do is learn me through therapy yeah. and prayer. And mm -hmm. you know, so I don't want to be funny about that. You know. So gotcha. I, I, I can't embrace that. Brother, again, much respect for even your vocalization of where your soul is with that right now because yeah. you have a lot of you have a lot of um 
and it's not just in, in, in the entertainment. It's not, you have people in general in everyday life that, you know, feel the same way. It's like, you know what, I've been through too much in my life. Yeah, and, my, and you know, Big Ed, that, that, there's a lot of things that we can talk about that's funny. That's you funny. Know, I don't, I don't talk about politics at all in my sense when I'm doing comedy. I, too many comedians are, that's their thing. You know, I, it, yeah. like right now, you know, the president is jacked up and I'll make comments on things that are just really obvious, but I don't have like a whole, you know, political uh, take on the world. I, that ain't my thing, you know. Right, right. I can't talk about that, you know, but there are other things to talk about. Like Come when on. I... When I do do this show, uh, I'm not gonna embrace anything negative. Come like, on, like there is there is humor and hilarity in things that are good and positive. You oh, know? brother, man, let's just, that, that's it, let's, right? You know, there. find other things, man. That's it's, right, it's a man. Big world out here, dude. Big world, brother, because that's my whole moniker, especially during this quarantine series. And mm -hmm. over on Instagram Live, we do a a weekly thing called Positivity Pass, where oh, I, I love it artists from all over the world that are doing just what you said, man. I'll bring them on and they may, it may be a, a, a cat that, that works for, I don't know, it may be an accountant during his off quarantine, but he picked mm -hmm. up his, 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 his guitar again and he's playing it with his little, his daughter. So I bring yeah. him on to say, how is Good. your artistry keeping this alive? What you just said, and, and you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it another further too, man, because I gotta keep it real. When I learned in this business, Jay, I came out here in, in LA in 85. And when mm -hmm. I came out here, I came out with like, as real as anybody would want to give it, I came out with my own VB luggage. You dig? My own VB not understanding certain things about myself, you know? Mm -hmm. And when mm -hmm. I got, and even though I was blessed to be able to have certain people in my life who were already been there, done that in this industry to help, mm -hmm. you know, kind of say hey stay away from that check that out what have you i didn't listen so what mm -hmm. did i do i had to learn a lot of lessons about me mm -hmm. that came the hard way but i yes. learned and i'm still yes. here Bert, uh, mm -hmm. uh, lessons learned and bridges burned hey we keep moving you dig That's so right. it's like uh what you just said man that honesty jay what i said at the beginning of this whole thing is that's what i remember about you you have always kept it real to the point that's now giving, you know, myself and others who I've always had that moniker to say, hey, man, it's taken me through some changes to learn some things, but all in the end of it or through it, there's something to be thankful about. There's something that's to smile about, that's, about that's, especially that's just true, man. You know, what you just yeah, said. I, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I so agree with that, man. You know, <laughs> uh, I... You, you said uh, I managed to keep it real. I, I wasn't trying to keep it real. I was just being me. Come on. And okay. <laughs> I heard people say, and I think I can even say this, that when they were living, when they were kids, they were in poverty. They were poor, but they mm -hmm. didn't know that they were poor. There you go. Because they were just loving their lives. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that I wasn't being paid properly that i was underpaid i was enjoying you know my i still do enjoy my success you know yeah. i'm i've you know been able to you know make a little money and try uh -huh. to be responsible with it uh i didn't know you know that others were getting way more money than me mm -hmm. and you know i'm not saying i don't want money but it's not important to me like i don't I don't aspire to be a billionaire. Like, what you gonna do with a billion dollars <laughs> in a lifetime? Like, for real. What you gonna, what you gonna do with that much money? If I had it, I promise you I would give most of it away. I you don't really need that to have a healthy, successful, you know, wealthy life. Yeah. You know, do mm -hmm. I wanna have things? Sure. But so I don't, I'm not trying to keep it real. It's just, that's who I am. That's who, I, that's who you are. You know, I, and, I was telling Wendy earlier, mm -hmm. you know, I'm at a certain age now where I, I embrace maturity. And that's another thing we'll be dealing a lot with in my upcoming event. Yes. You know, go ahead. Uh, I ain't dead, so I ain't done. You know, come on. So, that's right. Um, you know, I'm 61 years old, brother. I'm rocking it. Right and uh, I'm proud to. <laughs> 
I'm at the door on Tuesdays uh, right. before this thing happened. I'm at Ross to get my 15% off every Tuesday. <laughs> Come on. Come so on. my AARP is current. It's current. <laughs> Mine is too, brother. I got to keep it. And, you know, I had to be guess that. Go ahead. <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm, I'm here. So keeping it really just being true to whoever you are, whatever, you know, we, we, we can't. And I learned this the hard way. I was... The true testimony, man. I spent years of my career just full of envy and jealousy for mm -hmm. one person, okay. and that was Steve Harvey. I could not understand why I am not as big as Steve Harvey. Gotcha. I used to wake up going to the news outlets to find out, hope that he failed. Please let him fail. Mm -hmm. I just wanted him to mm -hmm. fail so bad because okay. I thought he should be taking me for the ride. I should be rolling with him. Right. And I now understand that that's the, one of the reasons why my career never did really get this highest place because mm -hmm. I wasn't doing things that needed to be done to, to mm -hmm. elevate my career. I was just concerned mm -hmm. about Steve Harvey and what he was doing. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, after I got my divorce, I had a, some quiet time with God. He was like, you got to fix that. Cause I was mm -hmm. saying some stuff. It wasn't right. What I was saying about Steve Harvey, Steve Harvey ain't, ain't gotten into, it ain't his fault that he's successful, but I was right. upset. Mm -hmm. So I had an opportunity um, in case you don't know, I used to be the main stage host at Essence Festival. That's Seven right. Year. That's right. You know, I, I, I hold the record for that. But one mm -hmm. year, I wasn't doing that, but I was invited back to Essence for another thing. Steve Harvey, his whole show had taken over again my show. Okay. I was mad about that. But okay. I had to go fix it. So I w went to Essence, and uh, God told me to apologize to Steve. Okay. So I go to where he was speaking. <clears throat> True story, man. And um, security sees me walking toward the backstage. They meet me at the door. Said, what you want, Slocum? You know, I just need to speak to speed. Steve. No, bro. He's doing this thing. We ain't got time for this. Apparently, they heard about some stuff I had said. Mm -hmm. So I explained to the security guy, my man, I just need to, I got to clear this. He said, I'm a man of faith. I'm going to let it happen. Hold up. So Steve did his thing. Steve came off stage with his, with his crew. I come towards Steve. The security guy put his hand up. Said, no, no, not now. Steve goes back, does something else. About our lady comes back. Steve comes around the corner, fist clenched. You know what you want, Slocum. He's ready to go to blows. Right, like, bro. I'm not, here, I'm not here for that. Yeah. And I just found to him. I said, dude, I said some horrible things, and uh, I'm here today because I need to set this straight, man. I'm sorry. I get on my knees, bro. I said, I'm begging you, please forgive me for the things I said. Steve mm -hmm. brought me up, man. Both of us crying. Look at me. Come and, on. And, and he said, and he said, man, I knew something was up. He said it. Anybody can tell you, I tell people, Slocum is one of the most uh, godly people that I know. I could understand why you were saying these things. I said, brother, it was from a place of, of pure jealousy, pure envy. I thought what you had, I should have. And I had no right to say the things I said. Just please forgive me so I can move on my life. Much respect, Jay. You Much know, so you got to do those things, man. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he, now yeah. when I watch Steve, I'm just happy for him. I enjoy yeah. it. Yeah, things he's doing out in that place of envy, it died that day. It you died know, that day. People, you you can't be envious. And then again, Roland Martin came to the rescue later on, and he said, "I told him about the story." He said, "Dude, you are where you're supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. you are where, wherever you are. That's where you're supposed <laughs> to be. If you believe in God, that's where he's. Dude, it ain't time for you to be a multimillionaire. God knows that. He gonna give you that money. You're gonna do something stupid, probably. <laughs> you know." <laughs> You know, so now, you know, my, my thing is wherever I am, that's where I'm mm -hmm. supposed to be. There you go, brother. There you go. Which takes us back. First of all, for how many of us can really sit back and because I remember when I when I came to a part of my life, Jay, that uh, mirrors a lot of my own uh, uh, identity crisis mm -hmm. that I went through because of this thing called life. Uh, and I remember what, what brought me back. And what brought me back, brother, was my sense of spirituality where it was just me and God. That was it. I mean, I, I, love, I come from a loving family. I have that support group. But I had to get personal. And to use your word, I had to get mature with myself to say, wait a minute. That personal, as we know, we cared over and over again growing up, that personal relationship kicked mm -hmm. in with me. And it was me and God. He knows how I talk. 
He knows what I think about. He knew what I was going through. He knew my weaknesses. Right. He knew my mm -hmm. vices. He knew my decisions and the whole nine yards, you know? Mm -hmm. And when I got that together, brother, it, it took me out of the U.S. I was gone. I left, wow. I left the U.S. And didn't care if I came back or not. Didn't care. Right. Really could right. care less. But that's when God really started working with me. Mm -hmm. I had to get away from it all to get it all. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. did? So yeah, uh, what you're saying, brother, number one, again, thank you for your honesty. And mm -hmm. what you've just said, I can tell you have touched so many people that's going to hear this, man. And mm -hmm. that's the style or that's the essence of what comes out of your comedy. You, yeah. have a, you have a genius to be able to make what you just said for somebody to laugh, somebody to feel mm -hmm. good about their own experience. Where does that magic or that genius come from? Where does that correlation, how do you put that together? I, Thank you. I, That's I, it. I, I don't know. You know, <laughs> there's no book. There's no course, you know. It's just life. And um, I, I just want to encourage everybody. Man, therapy works, bro, you know. People go see and talk. I've learned some stuff about myself. I'm like, that's why oh, <laughs> when you understand it, you can make some adjustments on it. Come on, you know? brother. That's uh, yeah, it's just crazy. <laughs> but no, it, it, it's not a not a hard thing. You just gotta you gotta want to, you know, make things better and yeah. and uh, and just have faith, man. I'm have not faith. a I'm not a religious cat like gotcha. I used to be. I was yeah. raised Seventh Day Adventist, and we had uh -huh. some. Some rules. Me too. Yeah, me too. Uh, you know, yes, we did. did now, we? Yeah. yeah. In fact, as the funny thing is, I actually have a whole show about being raised Seventh Day Adventist. Okay. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've done it a few times, uh, and I, and the title of it came from what I used to say as a child. We were Seventh Day Adventists. My father wasn't, and and we knew people that were not Seventh Day Adventists. Uh -huh. And so whenever we get invited to the house to eat, I had this one question that I always had to ask before I eat anything. As a kid, I would say, excuse me, uh, do it got pork in it? That's, so my show is got, it's called Do It Got Pork In It. Growing up, <laughs> that was all I wanted to know. Hey, this, this man, do, do, do it got pork in it? I'm like, oh, baby, this is lemonade. Um, no. Exactly. Exactly, y'all. You know, cuz, hey man, you just gave me flashbacks. I have to say that I am so thankful for 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 what I grew up in and the foundation. Yes, sir. Yeah, because yeah, it actually saved my life in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. But the the comment, and I have so much respect for what, and I know you do too. We talked about this. That respect is there. But once yeah. again, it's 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 just telling. The, Feeling though the the continuing to fill the, the 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 any gaps of why this clean comedy is so real, because we can laugh about our upbringing religiously, whether it's Seventh Day Adventist, Baptist, uh, Methodist, whoever can identify. Is, yeah, right? but let, let, please be clear, folks that are watching. You know, <laughs> comedy is comedy. Thank you. It's you comedy. know we are those of us that are. <laughs> you can tell those who are gifted with it and those who yeah. try to make money. You know, those of us that are gifted with it. You've got to break, please break that down, brother. You know, those, we can't help it. You know, when I was on tour with Sinbad, we would go into a city. He dropped his bags off in a hotel. He's on the street. He, he'll do his first 30 minutes on observations from that city. Right on, man. Because he loves people. Yes, he, he does. Just loves and that gift is just a part of that mm -hmm. and there are others other comedians who have a set and you know that's all they talk about and they don't greet people mm -hmm. and you know people who are gifted to do this we just find a way to bring some laughter to people whether it be the barista at starbucks or mm -hmm. the, you know the, the, the cashier at the grocery store it's just in us you know mm -hmm. and as for me I just gave that gift that came from God. I said, just put me where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. And he's been my agent. I've never really had an, a real on, agent, man. like a like a big agent. I mean, right. shout out to my man, Jordan Manello in Nashville, booked me for years with things relative to faith and church. 
But, you know, I wasn't with CAA and all these big agencies because, mm-hmm. I, you know, God has really been my, my agent, you know, and referrals have worked for me. If I'm doing something for UNCF, somebody in the audience is going to see me, and then next thing I know, I'm doing five other dates from five other places. Yeah. It's just favor, man. It's, it's just favor. favor. And, and you know what, Jay? I know you, because like you said, even like in the non-clean comedy scene, there are people who get offended over uh, topics that a com- that a comedian will bring out, a bit that they'll do. You know, if, if it hits too close to home or if they think it's the, not the politically correct thing to say, it happens in our churches too. You know, like you yeah. very well know. What, you know, when do you feel that this bit, or do you even think about that in writing? Like, what is your, do you have gates to your comedy? No, but see, this is the thing. And I tell comedians who ask advice, two things. First is, if you're doing it for the money, get out. Second, you got to find your audience. Okay. So when I show up, I don't worry about somebody being offended or any thing against me because I was hired because of what I bring to the table and, and mm-hmm. what I've built through my legacy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't have to deal with that. And I always tell people, you know, the power of choice is, is strong. <laughs> yes, it is. So don't yeah. be offended. Mm-hmm. Just find somebody that best suits your preference. Exactly. If, if somebody, you know, there's a comedian named Corey Holcomb. Yes. Brilliant. When I tell you brilliant, brilliant. But his his take on <laughs> men and women, it ain't for everybody. That's right. That's and right. you will know his take on it in one minute. You ain't got to mm-hmm. spend a whole hour to find. No, you know. So within that one minute, you can decide if this is for you or not. If mm-hmm. it's not, leave. Don't have nothing bad to say because there's a room full of people who love that dude for exactly exactly what he brings to the table. So rather than, you know, go on these rants and saying they should do this, no, just find what you want. And that's in everything. That's in If you don't like hardcore hip hop, then, you know, go with the conscious hip hop of common and find what you want. There are Mm. so many options out here, man. There's no reason why anybody should be stuck on being trying to bring somebody down. It's just not for you. That's when it comes to your preference of your love interest. You know, somebody was talking about, you know, man, these big women are disgusting. Dude, it ain't for you. That's right. There is, there, you ever seen the show called uh, The Good Girls? No, I have Well, one of the, one of the main characters is a, is a big, beautiful, uh, four-figured woman. Okay. Gorgeous. And, and she got this really good-looking guy built a certain way. That's his, he loves on this woman like she is, Thank you. you know, Thank Naomi you. Campbell. Thank you. So, so, so the thing is, just go with what you want. Mm-hmm. Everybody else, if it's not for you, it just ain't for you. That's mm-hmm. just it. It ain't. That's it. You know what? And I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. You sometimes, y'all, you see me looking down is because Jay, I'm I'm able to see these things coming up, and it's blowing up with love oh. and sending okay. out to you, brother, and waves. Wow. And uh, uh, brother Thank Leon you. just said, "What's up, Rumi?" So it's like you gonna see her? Yeah. <laughs> so let check it out, bro. We were roommates at Oakwood. You were talking about my flair for fashion. This is a true yeah. story. So Leon and I were like brothers. And the, the true story is we came back after our freshman year and, and neither of our roommates returned our sophomore year. Uh-huh. So we were standing in Edwards Hall, you know, looking, trying to find out who's gonna be our roommates. We kind of caught eye and I kind of did like that. He did the same thing. <laughs> His father was behind me going like this. Oh, love his dad. Love his dad. Yeah. You yeah. know, because I'm not right. a good fit for, you know, the <laughs> Leon Seard brand. He was brilliant, <laughs> you know, only child, oh, yeah. you know, oh, affluent. He, I didn't fit. Mm-hmm. So we became roommates and we were the yin and the yang. Okay. I'm the socialite. Uh, I'm like, yo, Leon, I'm about to go to the gym. He's like, no, dude, you got a test. Sit there. <laughs> I'm like, but I, no, sit down. <laughs> All right, and then the reverse. He's at his books. He majored in pre-med. He was always right. said, hey, right. "Dude, let's go to the student. Let's get out. Come on, we gotta go." I got no. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So we were that kind. Of, so then his mom loved 
the dynamic between us. Yeah. One day she decided to send us what she thought was just the gift of all gifts. She sent us plaid blazers. Okay. <laughs> and when I tell you, <laughs> it was the most horrible. I mean, those blazers were like, like what made you think, mm -hmm. Mrs. Sears, to send us these blazers? Like I think mine was red, white, and blue. He was Ooh. brown and orange or something. Just <laughs> wrong. But we, you know, we wore them They're on right tacky on. day. Okay, okay. <laughs> so me and, and Sierra was at my wedding, man. That's my dude. Shout oh, see man. there, man. That right yeah. there, see? Stories that's like that, man. brother. That yeah. goes back to, and, and the Sierra family, Bob, man, his mom and dad. Yeah, much love and much Good respect. People. Just all my yeah. life. And you know what? But you gave you were giving me flashbacks that were that were beautiful, man. Because yeah, I man. remember, and those of us Oakwoodites who, who I know are watching and may watch later, man. When you think about, especially the the, the, I, I, the I'm going to say shows, performances, what have yeah. you, that were hosted by you on that camp, especially in the early '80s. Come on, y'all, yeah. the '80s and '90s, um, well, '80s, '80s, '70s, and '80s. Yeah. You know, man, we had some, and it makes me proud just to give a little tip to, through the Oakwood Adventist realm, all the yeah. way back to Little Richard. I'm proud of that, yeah. that lineage yeah. that was yeah. left, all the way up through to, to take six, groundbreakers in their own way, stopping and doing their thing. And the list can go on and on, Clifton Davis and so many others. To hey, hey, don't, don't forget one of the newest ones. What's we that? had to give shout out to Shalea, dude. She oh killed it my on the Shalea Clark Sister movie. Man. That oh, woman that Clark Sister? killed it. Even before she the Clark killed Sister. it, dude. Oh she my goodness! She killed it. She, she killed is... it, man. And 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 her mom, Sheila, went to Oakwood. In fact, Sheila and I used to sing in a group together. Really? Uh, yeah, the Blessed Peace. Um, blessed Peace. At the time. Yeah. Now, was that the same Blessed Peace as Eric Todd? Yeah, every time I had a yeah, group first. It was me group, right. and um, Wanda Lott and Sheila Come McNeil. On. We were the Woo! Blessed Peace trio first. And then, oh, you know, uh, Sheila Fraser came along later. We became a quartet, I think. And then mm. Mark Pugh, I think, was in it at the time. So, yeah, yeah so but Shalea killed that thing, man. Come yeah. on, man. Oh, Much brother. respect, Shalea. Much yeah. respect. I've been a fan of hers, man. And and that mm. just to name those of, of the people that have gone through the, the, the Moran yeah. Hall stage, the Ashby yeah, Auditorium man. stage. Yeah, and, man. And, and, you know, I got I all kinds of <laughs> memories from that, man. But you know what? I, I tell the story sometime. Um, so when I got to Oakwood, that's another whole story, but I was there for a two-year scholarship in communication. Okay. Um, but when my two years ended, I was getting ready to go. You know, yeah. but word had got out that I was leaving. So on the last night of, I was supposed to be there, I was invited to Cunningham Hall, which at that time was the girls' dormitory, right. for worship service. You know, you mm -hmm. can't have a, a combined That's right. worship service unless it's, you know, uh, okay. So yeah. I went there, right. enjoyed my last, you know, because I was Mr. Cunningham Hall when I won Mr. Oakwood. And Get down. So I went there, <laughs> yeah. And so at the end of the service, they said, we have a presentation to make. And the young lady was, she, she said, John, do we know you're leaving tomorrow? Started crying. She said, honestly, this campus can't happen without you. So right on. These two young ladies came down the center aisle with a garbage can full of money. And the student body paid for my next two years at Oakwood. They just, wow. They had letters of transfer from their accounts to mine and, you know, little notes. Yeah. And just, yeah. He paid yeah. right now. That was come on. I kind of knew I was gonna be doing something with this. I didn't know what. And then people, I remember this one letter. A uh, young lady, her mother sent it saying she wanted to transfer some money to my account because her daughter depends on seeing me every morning. She worked in a cab or something. Uh, I made her laugh every day, and she was most times depressed because she was, you know, she was overweight and she didn't feel yeah. good about herself. And I would mm -hmm. just say, "Good morning, beautiful." Just, you know, just say, "Hey, beautiful." Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Means something to her. So Oakwood for me is the place where I really discovered that I was going to be doing something. I didn't I still didn't know what yet. Mm -hmm. Yes, but I had that was when I knew I really got this gift. You know, to make people feel good, make people happy. 
Oh, Jay, man, you know, that just attests to that. Because another thing I can say about that Oak, our Oakwood experience is that sense of family. Yeah. There was a, there's a sense of family that, and we know we get, as with any family, we're going to agree, mm -hmm. we're going to disagree, we're going to have this, mm -hmm. but, but when it comes down to it, you know, you can see it, and, and I haven't been able to make alumni weekends uh, a lot in the past, but, before, but you can see it then, you can see it in any major gathering. Hey man, it's the hugs are there. It's the remember wins. Bruh, are there. I see it on the <laughs> road all the time. Don't change the story, Come Vic. On, this man. is the funniest thing oh, ever. Is, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, because I'm kind of famous or whatever. So I people don't. who have gone to school with me and are married with kids, they brag. You know, I, me and me and Slocum, well, I, you know, I, I know. <laughs> the wife like, you don't know. I'm telling you, I know Slocum. <laughs> Dude, I went to the one. I went to this I one show it. and this. I greet the fans after the show. He's like, slow up! Right, three kids. He's like, hey, man, I was like, what's going on, man? He said, remember me from Oakwood? I'm like, my man, Oakwood, yeah, man, we had a good time with Chris. He's like, no, you remember me? I say, uh, help me out. He's like, remember you came to the Oakwood store? You wanted to wash your clothes, right? You asked them for change for a dollar. They ain't have no quarter. I'm the one that gave you change. Remember me? <laughs> and he profiled like that after. Like, remember me? <laughs> I was like, um, my man, I man, I appreciate them quarters. He told the wife. See, I told you he know me. He know me. I told you. I did that tell you. Remember me? Hey, that's it. But that's that love, you know, that's that Oakland love we talked yeah. about, man. It was, I wouldn't, oh man, it's just, it, it fills me to this day. And then when I, when the social media thing started, oh wow, yeah. and that's when I was just getting back into wanting to be around people, you dig? I was mm -hmm. getting back to my sense of self. Yeah. And then the Facebook thing started happening and I started seeing um, people that I remember spending, like you just said, special times over my life and mm -hmm. eating at the calf and just should have, like you just said, yeah. should have been in class, but I was somewhere else doing something else. And those things came back, which also attributed to my soul healing in Absolutely. a lot of ways, yeah, in man. a lot of ways. Growing yeah, up in man. our home church at Breath of Life SDA in Orange Mound and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and all of those things, brother, just, just attributed to remember, hey, big, like God saying, hey, hey, now yeah. you got your spirit getting right now. Now let me remind you mm -hmm. of who you are. Yeah, yeah. And man. your comedy through this venue or this moniker of clean comedy does just that. I'm not the only one. I'm just, I'm going to say, I'm just testifying on how, how, how much I dig it, you know? Well, on you know what, man, and, and, and I appreciate that. And I appreciate, like you said, on this social media format, you know, um, I know that I've been able to bring some laughter into the lives of people, especially now more one-on-one. -on -one. And sometimes, you know, people just want to say thank you, you know? Yes. And I get these letters. And many times, they send stuff on Cash App just to say thank you. That's right. That's Dollar right. sign J Slope. J A S L O K E. Feel free. <laughs> Dollar sign J S L O K E. If you laugh today, Dollar sign J S L O K E. <laughs> right on. <laughs> right on, right on, and much respect and for real. You know what, man? And you know what? Let me ask you this, Jay. Mm -hmm. Other young clean comics, other comics who would like to follow in your clean, who don't feel comfortable that their comedy is is on the mainstream. What do you have to say for them, brother? Do you mentor they, others? They, <laughs> they don't exist much anymore, man. That's not even, you know, the, the people that holler at me as it relates to, you know, me being a pioneer of this gospel Christian comedy, uh, Today's young people, they, they want money, bro. You know, whatever they can do to make large, because they think that it's quick. Because many times it is, you know. You get somebody that'll do a character on Instagram, they get 300,000 views, and the promoter is calling them up to do a show. You got to go. Because he believes if he got 300,000 views, at least 2,000 are going to show up to the show. So the promoter make the money. I don't know what the comedian would get, but they're only doing it because they want to make some money. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so I 
the, the, the people who contact me are those who have accepted a new way of living their lives uh, in a way of faith, and they want to know if they can still use that gift. So they come to me. So people who've been out there a while, you know, holler at me now. But these young cats, man, it, it's a whole new game now. You know, that's why I don't really do stand-up comedy much anymore. Uh, but what I do do is I do a lot of um, – I host everything because yeah. people like – you know, a program to flow a certain way. You yeah. want people to enjoy. So I do. That's my main thing, and that's an entree into what I told you about. I'm working on because I yeah. just those things. You know, so you know, I get a one call a quarter from somebody saying, "Man, you should do a gospel kings of comedy," and I I resent the notion of somebody wanting to do anything to counter the huge success of these four amazing, iconic, legendary comedians. Fantastic. I don't want to do anything to take away from that. So I, I don't want somebody to say, you know, uh, they did a gospel version. Of, no, they should stand alone as the kings of comedy. Steve Harvey, Bernie Mac, D.L. Hughley, said the entertainer, they earned that right. Because at that time, they were the biggest box office uh, in black comedy, so they earned that. Now, if you want to do a tour with comedians that do something of faith, we can come up with another name and I'll host it. But I'm not, you know, I'm not really, really wanting to do a stand up performance thing. Right. I mean, I can. It's not yeah. at, the, at, at the top of my list anymore. I got you, brother. Well, hey, the other comedians and that same thinking of, that, of the clean comedy and positivity, if you're watching this or when you watch it, We've had the opportunity today to sit here with the pioneer of gospel comedy, but one of the forerunners of clean comedy that's keeping it alive and moving forward into yeah. even other arenas, bigger and better things. And I feel honored, man, that you were able to, to that we just kind of fell into that conversation of something yeah. boiling of you working on. Um, and, and all of us who love and respect what you're doing, man, we're going to be here, brother. We're going to be right here supporting. You know, man, I appreciate it, man. And I'm glad that you returned back to your love for music. And you look, if your last name Brooks and you can't sing, get out. <laughs> I mean, you ain't no real Brooks. On, all the jokers sing, all y'all sing. <laughs> just yeah. you, just who else sings in your family? You know I what? Know your dad did, right? Mom and dad, they still sing. Uh, mom's still doing her thing, brother. Wow. And, uh, Julie must, you know, baby Julie, she, well, I call her baby Julie now, but she's now got the billboard, gave her the moniker. Uh, house diva right now so she's taking her house dance okay that's oh. funny so chris willis does something oh, in electronica chris. and yeah. house too right yeah one of my favorite singers chris willis is doing Aren't that related some kind of way well you know what uh we became related when julie and brian were married right because that's what it was okay there's no blood relation there okay but with the willis side ani lane oh my god man mama willis you know claude and brian's mom mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and freddie and mike's mom man yeah. ani was one one of those teachers for us growing up right, man. He, right, you know, right. She's, especially when it came to the gospel and spiritual thing ani yeah, was right yeah. in our corner you yeah. know but the whole willis clan i mean they yeah man. singers 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 man so singers. but yeah and chris can my brother Chris can sing? That boy can sing, but yes, he's please. actually the one that's putting all of our management and agency together for Julie. Oh, nice! That's nice. Chris. <laughs> but that's you know what, up. ladies and gentlemen? As you see, we had some laughs. Hey, if you saw it, you saw it. I shed a couple of tears, but it was you know it wasn't negative tears. It was cleansing tears. It was tears of being able to share this time with my brother who I've always respected and wow. had the utmost love for. And um, you, you've heard some reminiscing also about yeah. his life, my life, it's totally. That's what I love about the format we're doing. We really, we have a couple of bullet points that I bring to a, to a conversation, but we just let that positivity flow. And, and it did that today. It healed some people yeah. I know. It touched <clears> some people and y'all, where can we find, where can we keep following Jonathan Slocum? The website, the, the Instagram, the Facebook. Man, I am constantly trying to up my ante when it comes to social media because that is now our future, brother. Mm -hmm. You know, after all this is over, I don't know how many venues are going to even be open. But we That's can right. go and, you know, or maybe yeah. smaller things. But right now, 
I do as much as I can on Instagram, which is I am Jonathan Slocum. That's my Instagram. My Twitter is I am Jay Slocum. My Facebook is uh, Comedian Jonathan Slocum. And, you know, I, I would, man, I, I, I comment and I return messages to anybody. I just love people. You know, we're living in a time where, you know, we have to appreciate our fan base. And people kill me trying to make everybody family. I'm not trying to, my family is my brother David, my sister Gail, my mama Earlene. That's my family. It's okay to have fans. You know, fans are people who support your work, who you mm -hmm. supply something for them, whether it be for music or film or anything like that. So yeah, I yeah. encourage and I, I love my fans. You know, yeah. I, I do stand for you. And, and I was joking, but you know, these ways that you can uh, show love through monetary means or cash out or PayPal, we need that. Yes, we, we yeah. you know, not not just us, but you know, you know, we give you something, mm -hmm. and that's what I love when people come to wherever I am. Yeah, you, know, you know, I'm, I'm appreciative, man. I appreciate you, you know, for having me on, man. I I don't I don't say yes to everybody, you know, because some of the formats may not suit me, or mm -hmm. you know, but you like me. You know, you are mature and uh, you ask the right questions. Thank you, Jay. You know, the only thing I would ask of you is to join me uh -huh. uh, in this beautiful place of being bald, man. Your hairline is. <laughs> I need you to let it go. My hair, what's, what's up with my hairline, Jay? But let it go. Let it's, it go. <laughs> think you gotta let it go. <laughs> Your hairline ain't grown no more. Let it go. Come on, I do this. This is beautiful, man. Do this <laughs> and let the gray come in. Quit playing. Let that. When I next time I see you, I want you to be bald because your hairline is meeting the middle of the back of your head, bro. Um, hey, Jay, did you, know you see? That's... Did you see what happened to our friend Whitley Phipps when he finally? I see, Whitley didn't have right, a comb right, over. Right, Whitley right. was combing <laughs> forward, and then he let it all go. And let when he go, let it go, what happened? He met up with Oprah. <laughs> you know what that reminded me of, Jay? Uh, our boy Johnny Willis from Chi-Town reminded me of those Edward Hall bag outs, brother. That were oh. that were just, you know, that would that would That's do right. their thing. And you were one of the best. And we see why, brother. We see why. <laughs> no, but I, I want you to let that go, brother. It, I, it's yeah, you know, go. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, it seems like I got room to think about it. I can see what I'm thinking a little bit. You do have a lot of room. <laughs> In fact, if I look closely, I can see the presidential results for November. Yeah, well, how does it look, brother? How are we looking for November? Uh, all I can tell you is this. If they vote in 45, if he comes back in again, yeah. I am changing my name to Jonathan Slacumbe. I am <laughs> for Africa. I am moving from America. I am Eddie Mavide coming to America. I am coming to Africa. I am getting the hell out of here. I would not be with the man who lead the country, the country uh, to tell me to be, uh, in order to be healthy, I have right. to drink Lysol and Clorox. That's fine. <laughs> Jonathan, love you, brother. Much respect. Ladies and gentlemen, follow me on all the formats you just saw. We can't wait for what's coming up because you've been so strong in what you've already given. Much love, My Jay. Man. Thank y'all, Facebook Live. We'll see you right back here at 3 o'clock Pacific with Julie McKnight. Talk you to got you. Julie. Oh, hey, Julie. 3 o'clock. <laughs> All right, man.